So hi, everyone. Um, my name is Rebecca. I'm a junior at Brown concentrating in history with a focus in legal history. And I'm joined um, by my lovely fellow PCA, Zoe. Hi, everybody. I'm Zoe. Um, I'm a sophomore, most likely concentrating in music and Africana studies. Um, and yeah. So today we are going to be talking about how to write cover letters. Um, this is one of many workshops that's going to be available in our fall semester series. Um, so we'll be having this exact workshop offered a few more times as well as some other ones like resumes, networking, all that good stuff. Um, so just to give you a sense of kind of the format in terms of how this is going to run. Um, so the beginning of it, we're just going to be really talking through what a cover letter should look like, um, kind of critiquing specific examples to give you um, a much firmer sense of it. And then we're going to open it up to you guys for a live Q&A. Um, you are welcome to ask questions through um, out using the chat function, but we'll probably save them till the end. Um, and it would be great if you could send your questions in the chat to everyone instead of just directing it to me or Zoe um, so that your peers um, can benefit from the questions you're asking as well. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the primary goal of a cover letter is to express two main things. One, is why you're very interested in the specific organization or the specific role that you're applying for, as well as your qualifications. So you're gonna be connecting two to three of your own personal experiences um, to some of the required skills or qualifications that the employer has mentioned, either in a recruiting session, in the actual internship posting itself, whatever it may be. Um, and then also, just in terms of formatting, cover letters should not exceed one page. It's going to be about three to four paragraphs single spaced, and you really want to make sure you're emphasizing your verbs or your actions. So rather than describing just that you have great leadership skills, you're going to show how you have leadership skills, for example. Okay, so moving right along to the first paragraph. Um, you want to start off by addressing the cover letter to someone because it is, after all, a letter. Um, ideally, it'll be a specific person, maybe a recruiter, maybe just the person who posted the listing. Um, but if not, you can put dear hiring manager to whom it may concern, whatever floats your boat. Um, and you also want to make it clear that you are writing to apply for the position. Sometimes people will say, I'm interested in this position. Um, and in their system, that'll be marked as like someone trying to find out about opportunities versus actually applying to them. Um, so make sure you're saying I'm writing to apply. Make that very clear. Um, you also want to avoid the common pitfall of introducing yourself. A lot of people start a cover letter with, hi, my name is so-and-so. Um, it just takes up space. That information is already in your header. It's totally not necessary. And from there, now that you've specified the exact position that you are applying for, um, you want to say two to three specific things about that position or maybe the organization at large that are attracting you to this role. So before you start selling yourself on why you're great for the role, you really want to convince them that you are sold on them. So why did you apply in the first place? Um, is it because you heard really good things about it from a recruiter or from an alum? Is it because you saw on their website um, kind of their mission as an organization? That's something you're really attracted to. So, you know, these things don't have to be completely original. This can be something as simple as going on their website, their About Us page, and seeing what they value um, and kind of mirroring that back to them. So that's kind of a great way um, if you haven't had a specific experience with someone at the organization um, to talk about why you're interested in. And then again, you really want to emphasize how you're interested in them um, and what you can bring to the table and not so much about why getting hired would be good for you. It can tend to sound a little bit self-serving in language um, and you just want to avoid that. So we're gonna be looking at a really solid example um, so you can see the person has the header at the top that they have on their resume. You can just put it right in your cover letter. 
Um, you can put in the mailing address and title if you have room. If not, don't sweat it. Um, and then it's addressed to Mr. Foreman. If you aren't comfortable using gendered pronouns to um, address someone, especially if you haven't met them before, it's perfectly acceptable to say, dear uh, Ron Foreman. That's totally appropriate. Um, saying very clearly the position they're writing to apply for, and also a really personal experience that this person had um, that made them want to apply. They clearly articulated um, the events that they attended, whether that be the workshops or the information sessions, and said very specifically why they like the organization, what excites them about the role. And then in the last sentence, they do a great job of saying what they're going to bring to the table. Um, in that case, giving other students um, peace of mind that they had when they came to visit the career lab. Okay, so I'm gonna hand it off to Zoe to talk a little bit more about the meat of the cover letter. So yeah, so the second um, paragraph and then the paragraph following that are your body paragraphs and that's where you kind of go into a more detailed description of the skills that you're presenting and the experiences that helped you learn those skills. Um, so for each paragraph, so for the second paragraph, um, you'd pick one experience from your resume um, that highlights a skill or qualification that's important to the job. Um, and the purpose, again, of each body paragraph is to explicitly demonstrate how that experience gave you that skill um, specifically. And you want to explain to the reader what you did, what the result was, and what the connection is to the job that you're applying for. Um, it's really helpful to use the same language that your employer is using, like the language that they're looking for. If they're looking for a really good um, team member or someone who's really flexible or um, really good at uh, picking up new skills, then you'd want to use that same language in your cover letter as well. Um, relevance is always more important than impressiveness. Um, so again, making those, you never want to make your employer guess like how this cer certain experience relates to the skill that they're looking for. You want to be very clear about how this experience that you had um, earned you this one skill. Um, and again, it's really easy to try to cram all of your experiences into these body paragraphs, um, but you really want to make sure that each body paragraph is only focused on one experience and one skill um, because you don't want it to be a repeat of your resume. The, the purpose of the cover letter is more to contextualize the resume, um, so you want to make sure each body paragraph just has one experience. Um, third paragraph, um, same basic premise. Um, you want to have uh, one or two body paragraphs, one with each experience. Um, and a good checklist for your paragraphs are why you're a good fit for the position, um, describe the experience that illustrates the skill that you mentioned, and then also you always want to conclude your paragraph with a statement of efficacy. Um, I believe that this skill would be useful for this position, essentially. So now we're going to go over some examples. Um, so if you just want to take a quick look at this um, paragraph, again, we're going to send the slides later, but um, one, uh, one thing that this paragraph could benefit from was being a little bit more specific about certain skills. It talks about more than one um, and isn't super clear about what skill they're leading with. So you want to make sure at the beginning of the paragraph, you're saying, you know, I'm a good, um, I'm really good at community bonding and, and teamwork. And then um, at the end, you want to um, make sure that you're, you're clearly stating like the skill that you're presenting. Um, and then if you want to go to the next paragraph, um, the, yeah, so this is more of a clear um, body paragraph where it starts out with almost a thesis of um, the skills that you gain from this specific experience. Then the meat of the paragraph, you go over exactly how that experience earned you those skills. And then at the end, um, you have your statement of efficacy. This is exactly why I'd be good. This skill would be good for this position. And another bonus thing I'll add um, is that, as you can see in this paragraph, the experience that the person is talking about is one that was just an extracurricular. That is more than fine. That is normal. That is great. I shouldn't have even just used the word more than fine. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of you know people tend to think that. The experiences you have to talk about are ones that have to be super professional or super impressive. But again, it's about relevance. It can be something that you did much earlier on in your um, career. It can be something that you did not in a professional setting, more in an extracurricular setting or volunteer or community engagement, whatever it may be. 
that's another great thing that this um, paragraph kind of points out. Okay. And then just kind of closing it out by talking about the closing paragraph. This one is the easiest to write by far. It's super brief. You're basically just kind of reiterating what um, specific skills or experiences make you um, a good fit for the position. So you're looking forward to, you know, discuss the opportunity further in a personal interview. You can repeat your contact info, choose um, the single best way or two. You know, I can be reached by phone at this phone number or this email at this email address. Just make sure it's consistent with the ones in your header um, so they're not seeing too many examples of contact information. Um, and then sometimes specific um, opportunities will ask you to say, um, you know, what salary you're looking for, what department you want to work in. Um, sometimes this can make sense to do up top, especially if you're applying it for a specific track um, of the opportunity, you're probably going to focus your cover letter around that track. But if it's something as simple as your location preference, that's something that's easy to slip in um, in the conclusion. And then also um, avoid too many exclamation points. Um, they can give off enthusiasm sometimes, but just don't be too heavy handed with them. And if you only remember one thing, just please send us an email at peercareeradvisors at brown.edu, whether it's about cover letters or really anything else, resumes, interviewing, networking. Um, we're more than happy to help. The way we're running things right now is just you send us an email and we'll get in touch with you um, to set up a Zoom call or an email to talk about um, whatever questions you may have or give you feedback on something like a cover letter. So if you walk away from this workshop saying, ooh, I feel like I have a better sense of how to write a cover letter, wrote it, drafted it, love it, but want a PCA to kind of give me the thumbs up or give me some additional feedback, or even just say, hey, what experiences even make sense to put in a cover letter and talk through it in a little bit more depth, just shoot us an email. Okay. So we are now in the Q&A portion of our program. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen um, so we can start fielding some of your questions. You can also um, unmute yourself if you'd prefer to ask a question that way. Hi. Um, I have a couple of questions if that's OK. Um, First, the I've always wondered, like with technical skills, like for instance, I'm doing Atma CS. If you have like a very like specific, I've learned this math thing um, that would be applicable to the role, but maybe isn't a term that like someone who's just scanning resumes and cover letters would know is applicable to the role. Like, is that something that should be included or shouldn't? How technical should you get in your qualifications? Um, I would say get as technical as the qualification, I'm sorry, as the listing itself asks for. So if the listing point blank says we need someone who can code in this exact language or this very specific thing, um, go for it. They're clearly asking for it. Um, often with uh, tech, that's also something that you might be able to ask a recruiter or a hiring manager about. Um, more specifically, but it's usually pretty safe to assume that your um, audience is an informed one. Okay, thanks. No um, and the other question I had was for um, that first paragraph where you're mentioning things that are like very specific to the company um, that couldn't be said about anyone else. That's definitely the part that I find the hardest because it always feels like, especially since I'm like churning out tons of applications trying to find something that often feels very cheesy. Like it's clear that I just went and did a Google search for your company, found some info that I could find on it and said that I like that when in reality, like a CS position at your company would be the same as a CS position at most other companies basically. So how do you make that sound not just sort of redundant and boring? Do you want to take this one, Zoe? Um, yeah, sure. I, I'm not in CS personally, so I don't, I can't speak from that experience, but I think that it's, it definitely is difficult to, to do really specific research when you're applying to a bunch of different places. 
but I think in general, um, it's good just to pick like one thing and to make it as specific as you possibly can. Um, it, it is gonna, it's definitely difficult when you run into the, like, is this sounding cheesy or not? Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about trying to include like a bunch of things about the company. Cause I think that'll probably um, sound more cheesy than you want it to. And I think it's good to just pick like one or two things that you really enjoy. But um, that's, those are my thoughts. I don't know, Rebecca, if you want to add on. Yeah, again, it can sound cheesy. Uh, truth be told, it might not feel good as you're writing it, but this doesn't have to be profound, especially for kind of the industries you're talking about. Um, but one thing that really might be helpful is specifically attending um, recruiting sessions if they're having them. Even if you can just name drop the um, hiring manager who led the presentation or something and saying after hearing them speak about this, um, that can be a good way of doing, you know, demonstrate interest. Um, and it can also be great to use LinkedIn um, to find Brown alumni who might work there and do a quick informational interview with them, which is basically just asking them about their experience. Um, so I totally understand that if you're applying for a million of these, that might not always make the most sense. But if there are kind of a few specific um, opportunities that are kind of your top tier or your preference, prioritize them time-wise um, and try and maybe actually talk to someone. Um, but it is important to know, and I should have mentioned this sooner, sorry. Um, if you are going to mention by someone by name in the cover letter, like after speaking to so-and-so, I'm especially excited about X, Y, and Z, um, make sure to ask for their permission. Um, the exception is if they are a hiring manager or some outward facing role, um, the company knows that they hired them to talk to you about the job. Um, but if it's someone who just so happens to be an alum um, or a family friend or some sort of contact um, where they're not, you know, hired for the sole purpose of talking to uh, college students about their day to day work, um, make sure you get their permission to um, include their name. All right. Thanks. No problem. Okay. I just received a question. Um, what positions slash in what cases should we apply with a cover letter versus just sending in a resume? Um, so if they ask for a cover letter, definitely send one. Um, if it's optional, this is where, again, it gets tricky. It's totally up to you. If you are someone who's like, yeah, I feel really confident in my writing skills. Um, I know how to write a solid cover letter, or at least after speaking with a PCA, I feel a lot more confident about my cover letter. Great, if you think it can help you, submit it. But if you're like, yeah, this is not my strong suit, then don't submit it. Um, and also it you know, depends on the field. Um, if you're applying for some sort of writing position and the cover letter is optional, you probably would want to submit it as another chance to show off your writing skills. So again, it's very dependent on what they ask for and kind of your comfort level with um, submitting a cover letter. These are all really good questions, by the way. So keep them coming. <laughs> And again, if you have any follow-up questions that occur the moment you log off the Zoom call, as they so often do, um, again, just send us an email up here, careeradvisorsofroundy.edu, and we can follow up with you. Also, for like very specific questions, that's a great place to direct to those. Okay. Are you getting any in your feed, though? Oops, I was muted. Um, no, I haven't gotten any. Okay, so official last call. Um, and then we will stop recording and um, call the wrap. Okay, I think we're gonna call it then. Thank you guys so much for attending. And again, just a reminder, check out the Career Lab YouTube page to see this workshop and the slides will be sent out to you shortly. Bye everyone. Hi, thank you. Thank you.